Here, today we focus on conditional synchronization, which is a new, uh, which is a form of synchronization that's different from locks and is used in sp uh, for specific problems. So, the first thing is that um, locks are all not not completely sufficient for um, solving paddle pro program problems. So, synchronization is more than just locks. Uh, what the right way is, uh, people still trying to figure it out, and there's this constant compromise between uh, making it easy to modify shared variables versus restricting when you can modify. Um, and then there's also the trade-off between flexible primitives that can support uh, different problems versus specific ones that do not extend. And conditional synchronization is one such construct where it's really, it goes beyond locks to implement um, techniques where you may need more than one thread to wait on a condition. Okay, and until the condition is satisfied, the thread should not be allowed to run. Okay, so we'll take a clearer look at this and then you'll, we'll, first of all, what the way we'll do this is we're going to start looking at, uh, we'll first define the problem. And then we'll look at solutions that do not do conditional synchronization. So we'll look at different ways of solving the problem. And so some of, most of the solutions will not work. And then finally, we'll look at how we can solve the problem using conditional synchronization. Okay. So conditional synchronization, like I said, is beyond locks. And the problem we're going to be talking about is the bounded buffer problem. So I'll define it uh, more precisely in a second. But essentially, just to give you a high-level overview, um, we looked at mutual exclusion in the previous segment. So essentially, uh, when you start looking at atomicity and how to achieve atomicity using mutual exclusion, so then the first question that comes to your mind is when does the thread actually wait? So if you look at it, the first question is when does the thread wait? Does it wait um, until the other thread is in its mutual ex exclusive section? So I wait until someone else has the lock. And that is, in locks, the only condition on which you wait. So you wait a lock acquires, and you wait for other people to, get, to release, for another person to release the lock. And the main condition you wait on is whether you have the lock or not. But realistically, you could also wait on other constraints. Right? Not just whether you have the lock or not. Maybe having the lock is not sufficient. Maybe you want other constraints to be held true before you can do anything useful. So we'll start, start taking a look at the bounded buffer problem to kind of put things into perspective. So the bounded buffer problem is one where you've got a circular buffer or a single dimensional array, and you've got a head and a tail pointer, and there's someone who's moving the tail pointer along uh, there's the consumer, and then the producer move, you know, moves the head along. Uh, the producer, or the consumer moves the tail along. Uh, the producer moves the tail along. So the producer essentially puts more things into the queue. The consumer takes things out of the queue. So the constraints for the bounded buffer, are obviously, this buffer itself is shared. Okay, so only one thread can manipulate this buffer queue at any given time. So the operation of putting things into the buffer and taking out, you want that itself to be atomic. Okay? And second constraint is that the consumer must wait for the producer to fill the buffers if all the buffers are empty or if none of them are full. Okay? That is a scheduling constraint. It's not a mutual exclusion constraint where only one of the threads is allowed to manipulate the buffer at any given time. It's more about whether the specific condition is satisfied. And the specific condition in this case for the consumer to run is that there is something to be consumed. Okay, And the producer must wait for the consumer to empty the buffer. So if the buffer is full, then I cannot put anything else into the buffer. right? And me being able to run does not make a difference. If the buffer is full and I hold the lock to the buffer, then it doesn't really make sense because I hold the lock, 
No one else can take anything out of the buffer. And without anyone else taking anything out of the buffer, I can't run because the buffer continues to be full, right? And so, realistically, there are two issues to this. One is only one of the threads gets to manipulate the buffer at any given time. That's the mutual exclusion constraint, okay? And the other is this scheduling constraint that really talks about another constraint that defines when this thread gets to run. Okay, this is not about whether I have exclusive access to this buffer. Even if I did, this other constraint needs to be still satisfied before I can run. So in the consumer's case, it must wait for the producer if all the buffers are empty. And the producer's case, it must wait for the consumer if all the buffers are full. 